Hello and welcome to another edition of the Dinosaur News Center. We bring you the latest in research, discoveries, and other news relating to the world of dinosaurs. I'm your host, the Illiterate Scholar. Today we'll be taking a look at plant-eating theropods, cannibals, and dinosaur poop, because we here at the Dinosaur News Center likes to keep things classy. Dinosaurs are big, and they're about to get even bigger. Let's face it, even if we find the entire skeleton, some things just don't get fossilized. Cartilage is one of those things. So the researchers at the Ohio University went to find out just how much cartilage is in the joints of the bones. Using an alligator and an ostrich, they've determined that up to 6-10% to of the length in their limbs were cartilage. What it basically comes down to is that we've underestimated the thickness of the cartilage in the joints of the bones. Theropods like Tyrannosaurus and Allosaurus were only slightly taller, whereas Ornithischians like Triceratops and Brachiosaurus may have been taller by as much as 10% or more. Congratulations Utah on a very successful 2010. In this year alone, you brought us 8 brand new dinosaurs. Here's a quick recap of them all. Gemini Raptor, a Troodontid, or cousin of the raptors. Two Iguanodonts. Iguana Colossus, the bigger of the two, and Hippodraco, which may have been a juvenile. Two Ceratopsins that we covered in last episode, Utah Ceratops and Cosmoceratops. Another Ceratopsin by the name of Diablo Ceratops is said to have 26 horns. Hey, I don't see 26 horns either, but that's what it says. A Sauropodomorph, which I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing the name right, but it's probably something like Cetad is the most complete sauropodomorph skeleton discovered in the United States. And finally, a Bytosaurus, one of the few sauropods that survived into the Cretaceous period. It looks like a smaller version of Brachiosaurus and is one of the few sauropods with a relatively complete skull. Huh, it turns out that not all theropods were actually carnivores, at least from the Coelosaur lineage anyway. A detailed study of their anatomical features shows that 44 of the 100 known coelosaurs were actually herbivores. The change from carnivore to herbivore also led to the evolution of the beak. This change in diet caused the coelosaurs to diversify into the many forms that we know today. What did the Tyrannosaurus eat? Well, whatever the heck it wants, then that includes other Tyrannosaurs. Yale researcher Nick Longrich discovered these bite marks made on a tyrannosaur bone. Marks that could only be made by another tyrannosaur. The marks were definitely the result of feeding. A quote from Nick Longrich, Modern carnivores do this all the time. It's a convenient way to take out the competition and get a bit of food at the same time. We don't know if the marks were the end result of a fight or from scavenging, but they have been found on several other tyrannosaur skeletons. So Tyrannosaur cannibalism happens more frequently than we thought, but as to what this really means, we have no idea. Alaska was much warmer 70 million years ago thanks to hadrosaur poop. Scientists have calculated that a single hadrosaur outputs as much as 10 cows. With data on how much methane is released from a single cow pie, the amount of greenhouse gases released by a standing crop of 500,000 hadrosaurs may have contributed to a much warmer Alaska. Yeah, one big pile of well, I guess we found the cause of global warming then. What we lack in quality, we make up for with quantity. Our population far exceeds that of any hadrosaur. Let's all stop pooping for a better future. Thanks to the advances in science, we can now study the inside of a dinosaur egg discovered 30 years ago. What they found inside was a beautifully preserved embryo of a baby Massospondylus. The embryo revealed that the baby Massospondylus looked very different from the adults. The babies had a large head, short neck, and walked on all four legs. This is the complete opposite of the adult Massospondylus or other prosauropods in general. The embryos also lack teeth, suggesting that they may have required parental care after they've hatched. Not only is this the oldest dinosaur embryo, but also the oldest vertebrate embryo found so far. Speaking of babies that look nothing like their adults, there's something I forgot to mention in the last episode about Torosaurus and Triceratops. Paleontologists don't agree with each other very often. Just because someone publishes their finding doesn't mean everyone will agree. Don't be surprised if you see a book published after 2011 that still lists Torosaurus. It doesn't mean the book is wrong. 
Hmm, since we've already covered one cannibal today, let me introduce you to the other cannibal. Majungasaurus ceratismus is a genus of ablosauride from late Cretaceous Madagascar. Like many of the other ablosauride, Majungasaurus has a shorter skull compared to other theropods. Based on the skull and a few other unique features, paleontologists speculated that Majungasaurus hunted like modern day big cats and employed a bite and hold tactic. Special adaptations like strengthened head and neck, as well as short and stocky legs may have helped it hold down its prey. In addition to that, the curvature of the teeth and the extra wide skull further supports this theory. Other unique features on the skull include a single horn at the center. An incomplete skull was once mistaken for a pachycephalosaur. Besides the tyrannosaurs, ablosaurs are also known for their extremely short arms and four fingers. Majungasaurus is a really well-preserved theropod. It's so well preserved that scientists were able to reconstruct its respiratory system and figure out how it breathes. And wouldn't you know it, it employs an air sac and lung system similar to that of birds. And finally, Majungasaurus was the only carnivore that's confirmed to be a cannibal, but not anymore it seems. Now with that out of the way, let's take a look at the mail and see what kind of questions we have for today. Huey Lewis asks, What do you think of the 1980s show Dinosaucers? Think it has a chance to be remade? Unfortunately, I haven't seen the show. It was never exported to where I lived, and by the time I came here, it was already cancelled. Luckily for me, all the episodes have been uploaded onto YouTube, so I can watch them whenever I want. As for a remake, I don't know, I've never heard of a cartoon being remade before. The 2003 TMNT is not a remake, that's more like a reboot. From what little I've seen, it's quintessential 80s awesomeness. And if you think this show is just a glorified toy commercial, well, there were no toys. Because the show got cancelled. Before they could be made. I did find some prototypes of the toys online though. I heard Galoob sold the rights off to a company in Brazil and they made some of these toys. And that's all the time we have for this episode of the Dinosaur News Center. Until next time, this is the Illiterate Scholar saying, Your poop is destroying the Earth! We used to be four ordinary teenagers. Until one day, we met some new friends from out of town. They were called Dinosaurs. My friends and I became the secret scouts, allies to these dinosaurs from outer space, and joined in their battles against Genghis Rex and the evil Tyrannos. The dinosaurs are leaving, Bossasaur! Well, follow them!